You're giving me a broken back, a heart attack, I'll surely cry. You're digging me an early grave, I'm up to leave before I'm back. But for a love like what you've got, you know that I'll do it. And for a love like what you've got, I'll keep on Salons is a canal and a transport village, mainly because the canal reached here about 1780, but was held up for a number of years after that with difficulties of how they were going to proceed. Salons at that time would, would have been a small area. Uh, the land previous to that would have been owned by the Flatsbury family, as were all of the lands in the area were owned and were given new names as, at the time, uh, around about that time. The canal uh, company was set up in 17... Uh, there was talks of the canal in 1704. And in actual fact, nothing happened for about 30 years. We're great here in Ireland are talking about things. But every, everywhere else it had ha ha happened and that work was con con proceeding on it. But uh, then, about 1750, it was decided to set up a company of the undertakers of the Grand Canal. There have been several companies in... in, in it, was, it was a series of errors. Levels, various wrong levels, wrong estimates. It was estimated that the canal first to go from uh, Dublin to the Shannon Harbour would cost about £90,000 at that time. And there was a difference between Irish and English pounds. There was a, a, a differential at that time. But, uh, it eventually cost, to get to Salins, it cost £120,000. It cost a lot more than what it would have taken for the whole lot. But uh, the canal company were very anxious, and, and for a number of reasons the canal was set up. Maybe the primary one probably would have been to supply water to Dublin, who was in very bad need of water. So the, the first water to supply the canal came from the Morel, which is around here, so that's, uh, the Morel River. And the canal was set up for to uh, provide water, but also to provide transport. If you think back to a time when there was no phones, no communications, network, a horse and cart was the only means of bringing material from one part of Ireland to another. And that had to be in several stages. Now, at the best of times, the most the horse could pull on the cart was one ton. But in the, the advent of, the boat, of a boat being developed, a transport on, 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 the, on the waterways, one horse could pull 50 tonnes. So we can see the immense improvement that that brought in the economics of the, of, of the canal. If you take, for instance, in, 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 in the, mean, the main time of the transport, 
a ton of coal in, 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 in Kilkenny would cost 10 shillings. By the time we got to Dublin, it was three pounds by trans various transports. So it, it all changed over the years. So the canal was, was, was a great invention, and it was underwritten by uh, the, the Irish government at the time. You know, we all heard of Grattan's Parliament. Well, they were very, it, it, things went very well during that time. And one of the ideas of putting a spur on the, of getting the canal developed in the, in the, in the uh, 1750s was that we had a lot of money. And if that money wasn't used, it would be recalled to London. So in actual fact, they, they, they said, we're, we'll, we'll kill two birds with a one stone. We'll prevent the English from reclaiming the money and we'll develop a, a canal system, a transport system that will satisfy uh, the, the needs of this country. They got as far as uh, the, the first line of it was a direct straight line from Dublin, was from Dublin to uh, the Liffey here at, 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 at Salins. Uh, it, it would, it, in actual fact, we will be passing by in a short while where the canal uh, took a, a sudden turn just, just down past, uh, about half a mile down here. The canal was to go to the Liffey and we, the boats were to be uh, locked down into the Liffey, sailed across, and then locked up on the other side. That was the, the, the original plan. Of, as I say, there were several false starts, several wrong uh, levels, several things that went wrong. They hadn't foreseen the many difficulties that would arise over the building of the canal. Uh, they built the canal, uh, first they encountered Gollerstown, the rocks, they had to hew the rocks out. And the first canal company was involved in that. And they had the grandiose idea of flagging the bottom of the canal with flags, like it was done in ancient Rome. Uh, the, the, the canal was a completely flagged in, in, in an oval shape. Uh, right, uh, so, uh, but they ran out of money. And that stopped that part of it. Then it, it, it went a further bit when it, it was let out in various stages. And uh, they, the stages were advertised on the local paper. So uh, San, Sanderson's newsletter and various different newspapers at the time. Not various, but quite a few that, that were, that were uh, widely established. A paper was about a halfpenny at the time, which was one old, one old halfpenny. Uh, and that was quite a lot for a lot of people because m most people only paid a penny a day. But the thing about it was that they, they, they reached Salins after about uh, 20 years, hard work and a lot of a lot of government acts. I think there's 20 government acts involving the, 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 the building of the Grand Canal. Uh, the first one was in 1704, when it was decided that they would do all this. Then there was another one in 1740 and another in 1756, in which was to establish the undertakers of the Grand Canal. Now the undertakers of the Grand Canal made a great progress and they got as far as Salins. But in fact, they lost out then. In fact, they, they, the, en the chief engineer resigned on Salins Bridge about 1790 uh, and he finished up uh, with the company. Then there was another company set up called the Grand Canal Company. And that's the one that, 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 that uh, succeeded. But in, in, in the meantime, though, they, they had this idea that they were going to um, uh, lock the locks, the, the boats down in, in, into, the, in, into the river Liffey, here at Salins, at a place called Burke Strand. And they were going to do the same when they got to uh, the Barrow, which they did for thir the first 30 years. But anyway, uh, there was a, a military engineer of great repute at the time, a man called General Valency. And General Valency decided, uh, why not build an aqueduct? Now an aqueduct, the Leinster Aqueduct, which became for the Duke of Leinster's name, the Leinster Aqueduct, this would have been a huge undertaking at the time. Not, nothing like it had happened in Ireland before. This was in 1783. It went through, uh, it was a complete in 70. But that meant that the canal took a sudden turn about a mile down here uh, to, to the left and in towards Nace. And now that I mention Nace, the canal had bypassed Nace. The railway when it came bypassed Nace. But why? 
we discovered after, uh, and, and it is only through, maybe through some of the efforts of our history group about 40 years ago, that we discovered why up to Low Town, Low Town, believe it or not, I get a joke, I know, laugh out of this all, Low Town is the highest point on the Grand Canal. It's 240 feet above sea level, or roughly that or thereabouts. And to get from Salins, you had a, a huge, there were huge levels, where, 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 where we call them short levels and long levels, where, where the land was equal. But then when they came to a sudden a rise in the ground, they had to in, introduce what they called a lock, and that was to bring the boat up into another level. And uh, the first, the first divot you had the 18 lock, and the 19 lock is the highest point. It was Low Town, and uh, a lot of engineering knowledge went into this. The reason being that the supply for the water for the Grand Canal came from Pollardstown Fen which would be the Seven Springs, known then as the Seven Springs of Pollardstown. They developed a, a, a feeder canal from Pollardstown down into the highest level of the canal, and that fed the water to supply the canal, the whole entire canal system. Because there, there were 19 locks back down into Dublin, and there was a further probably 18 or 19 down to the Shannon. So when the water coming in at the top level meant that every time a boat went through, the water flowed down from the that way, and then when it came up, it, and it was supply, continuous supply. And when, when the boat went, when, if the traffic was low, they provided a reservoir, and the rivers, reservoir was at Balnafa. And that, that, of course, was to be the original, the original site of the canal down south but they found that the land would, would have been too expensive to go through the best part of Kildare and it would be cheaper to go through the bog part of Kildare, which is West Kildare. But they had this awful difficulty of, of, uh, of getting, it, it took them 20 years to get through the bog. It was, it, it was uh, and eventually in 1800, they, they were here in Salins in, in 1780, but it took them 1800. The Robertstown Hotel was built in 1803, Shannon Harbour, and then they built a canal. But they built a canal, uh, the principal, they wanted money. They wanted ways of making money. So the, they introduced what they called the packet boats. The packet boats were sort of transport boats with high, high, high ceilings on them, high, uh, a railing around the top. And, and, and they, they would ply between um, Dublin and here, the hotel here in Salins, for the first nine or ten years. And after that, of course, when they developed the hotel at Salins, it was more like a day's journey from, from Dublin to Salins than it was from, from Dublin to Robertstown than it was from Dublin to Salins. So in, in actual fact, Salins became abandoned very easy, e e early and uh, had to be rented out and ended up in various, with Vayner's people, various people renting it over the, over the next hundred years. Um, in, in my time, in, 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 the, in the 1960s when I was here in Salins, it was a dance hall in one part of it, and the, the big house was, was the hotel. Now, a lot of people thought it was just a local big house, but it was the Grand Canal Company. And the great canal historian, Ruth Delaney, Ruth Hurd, never could find a picture of Salins Hotel. Nobody ever knew what it looked like. And I had been given a picture here by a local old man, about, his daughter was in it riding a horse. She was killed. Her name was Molly Murphy. And her, 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 he, in the background to her picture was this building. And I happened to be in the Canal Museum in South William Street in Dublin, all oh, good 50 years ago. And I was looking around and I saw this building at the top of the stairs. And I said to the, the guy, what building is that? I said, see, it's one of the canal hotels. Which one, I said, because it's not one of the ones that I'm aware of. I don't know, he said. I said, would it be Salins? Well, I don't know, he said, you can't see where it was written on it. But I said, I'd love to know if it was Salins. But he said, there's only one way to try. I'll be, I could be sacked for this now, but I won't, I'll do it. He took down the picture, took out the pins around it, took it out, and there was 
Salon's Grand Canal Hotel. Mm -hmm. And that, that big picture he has appeared in none of Ruth Delaney's books, none of them, because she wasn't aware of the picture being in existence. Crossing the Liffey was a major problem. Crossing the bogs was a major problem. Never, never really overcome, because there were several, several, several breaches near Edenderry in her own time, about 40 years ago, uh, near where Joseph Locke, the famous singer, lived. There was a huge breach in the canal. Uh, just just outside of Eatonderry. The land cracked open and the, the water flowed out all out into the countryside. It was the biggest job they had. But seeing about the water flowing out, one of the biggest problems they had was keeping the water in the canal. And as I say, the first 10 miles, the canal was flagged. They then came through a good uh, rocky part of the country, uh, down through Salins and right down in, into to, uh, almost to Digby Bridge and beyond the hills of Downings. But then they entered into the bog and the job was to keep the water in the canal in that area because it was flown out to the bottom. But they made the marvellous discovery that yellow clay, which was found in, in, in the hills of Downings, sold the bottom of the canal which prevented the water from escaping out of the canal. And that was the answer to one of their problems. Now they had a major problem down with the Corb Canal in the years after. But they never, they, 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 their rocks were porous underneath and the water disappeared overnight. It happened for a while in the first the Nays Canal. And now when I come to the Nays Canal, you see, Nays had been bypassed. And they, 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 the local businessman, the De Burgs, uh, would have been of Christie Burg. Now, Christie Burg is a grandson, is, his probably name is Davison. Uh, but his mother was a De Burg. Uh, uh, but they, they all grew up in Old Town, and that's why the local landlords, John Montgomery, uh, who built the mill in, Salon, in on, on the Grand City Canal, uh, provided, they donated the land for to bring this canal right into Nays, and then with the grandest idea of a way to the collieries in Kilkenny, hence the reason for going up to Cor Valley. But they, they had this same different, this, they had this same uh, prob problem in Nace. The water seemed to disappear overnight or in, in, some, in the canal for a while until they, they managed to sole it with this yellow clay. Now people built houses from this yellow clay in the old days. The, the old thatched houses with clay walls were built from this particular type of yellow clay which is about uh, three foot down under the normal soil and then you got this, this uh, course of clay only found in certain places. And it's very, uh, but uh, the, boat, the reason why Salins Nace was bypassed because there's only three locks here to the summit level, to Low Town. The 17th, the 18th, and the 19th. Just five locks up to Nace. So Nace is the highest point on the Grand Canal, even though it wasn't on the main line. But it wouldn't have been the main line then because the main line was Salins have completed as a spur off it. And it went to Nace for, uh, in, in, it opened in 1887, and we had a big celebration here in, in 1987 when the canal was, the Nace Canal was open and restored, and we had uh, spent a lot of money on it, putting new locks before it was done anywhere else. And, and then we put, um, uh, it was opened by Corrie Flynn on a Sunday in, 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 in uh, in, in, in 1987, and uh, then it, 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 the canal continued out. It, 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 sorry, the, the Nays Canal Company, which had a transport, they, they had their own boat, which used to come out here and meet the the, 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 the passage packet boats from Dublin, and then go back into Nays. But the first ones were too high in in, 18, in, in 1880. The first ones, the, the railings with the big high rail, which is used on the main line, were not suitable to go under the bridges into Nace. Because an engineer called Evans and an engineer called Chapman had designed the bridges in Nace to be at a bleak. The roads were coming at an angle to the canal, to come and so, so they built the bridges in an oblique fashion. Now this hadn't been developed in England. It was only developed in the wrong current canal in England 30 years later. So they claimed that for a long time that, that was, this was the first thing to happen in the British Isles. 
But it, the first thing that happened was with this great engineer called Evans, who, who also worked on the, the Leinster Aqueduct when it was being built as well. So he, he developed the canal in such a way that it, it, it was special locks, there was a five to go up. He put in special side sluices, as long as the sluices that were in the lake gates, to allow the lock to fill up quick in order to bring the boats up faster than the normal was normal on the Grand Canal. So the, side, the, the sluices were at either side of the lock. This brought, uh, uh, but, but the, then when, when they got to Nace, they, that was, they, they, the passengers were coming in, but in actual fact, the boats couldn't get under the new bridges, they were too low, the passenger boats. So the company went bust about 1808 and lay derelict for 18 years. The Grand Canal Company bought over about 1810 and developed, uh, proceeded to develop, to rebuild the bridges. And you can see the base of someone. To rebuild the bridges higher and also to continue the canal to Kilkenny was the grand idea. But uh, they got as far as Corbally, proved useful afterwards because most of the material, the bricks, for the building of the the the, the, Cora, the military on the Cora, the Cora camp, the, the British army were on the Cora from 1815, and then in about 18, they they used to come and camp. The finest training ground in Europe was was the Cora plain. So they used to come and to camp in tents. But in 1850, it was decided to build a a, 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 a proper uh, barrack on the Cora. There already had been one in Newbridge from about 1800. Newbridge is a new town, uh, developed in, in, in 1800. Uh, previously, the settlement was Old Connell. But they, they developed this canal hotel, or sorry, this, this canal, it, it used to, to bring the bricks up to, up to, to, to the Curra. They also brought some to Milltown, which was that Milltown feeder, which I described earlier, was the water supply for, for the whole canal system. So it, it was, but then, of course, uh, in 80, 18, 18, time seems to change. They developed faster boats, which are called packet passage boats, which carried more people, and the horses traveled at seven miles an hour, galloped, pulled by, they galloped at seven miles per hour, and were at, stopped at various stages, and there's various costs for, they had, like this boat here, they had, they, they had refreshments and all on the boat. And a major tragedy, uh, there were many tragedies on the canal, but the major one happened at the Leinster Aqueduct. Uh, uh, around, around where we are now, the major one happened at the, here at the Leinster Aqueduct. When the passenger boat on the way from Matai, at Christmas time, there was a lot of jolar, 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 <laughs> celebration. They were all drunk on the boat, and they all moved to one side of the boat, and the boat capsized, and there was an, about 30 people drowned. It was overloaded, the boat was. But the newspaper the following morning said, there has been a terrible drowning tragedy on, on the Grand Canal at Salins, but nobody of any note was drowned. Eddie, just at the height of the canal business, <coughs> uh, what numbers of boats, barges, whatever, what what level of service? Yeah, there would have been up to, up to 200 boats available in, in, in the height of it, and they carried. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have they carried huge. That continued. The transport part of it ended in the um, 1840s with the coming of the railway. Uh, for a long time, the, the, the canal company resisted the coming of the railways because they had to cross the Nace Canal. The railway had to cross it. So there were several court cases went on for at least three or four years, preventing them from going across it, in order for to um, maintain the, their business on the, of the passage boats to, to uh, but, but with the, the transport, the carrier of all the various sundries, and particularly Guinness's uh, porter, um, uh, continued right up into 1960. Now there were various along the way, various uh, small canals, were dropped out like Ballina, uh, Kinnegad, uh, the one down to Westmead, Tyrrell's Pass, <coughs> and various canals along the line were, 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 were closed down. 
uh, like Milltown was converted then shortly after that because the bus couldn't get the bus to transport instead. I used to have to go around by Milltown and the bus couldn't get over the bridge because the bridges were very humpback bridges. And that's the amazing thing about these humpback bridges. They were built for horse traffic and they're now carrying 40, 50 tons. Mm. You know, they were amazing feats of engineering, totally. particularly with the keystone, the other you know I mean, the whole sort of the pressure came on them and there's quite a number of them. Uh, particularly, uh, like, Monastery Evan had several bridges. I think it was known as the Venice of Kildare. There was some canals in all directions. You had the Barrow. And uh, uh, that's another example of where the boats, for the first 30 years of his life, were locked down and crossed the Barrow. And then about uh, in 1830, they decided to build a, 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 an aqueduct across the canal, at which to facilitate the railway and whatever else was continued over the years. But that was that was one of the main uh, feats. Of prevent, that, that was stopped at that stage. But the the, the, the remains of it is in the a local fellow's garden. The bridge where they were locked down. The, there was a bridge, and the, the bridge is there. And his garden goes right under it, and his plants saw it in the garden and all. But so after the mid 1850s, then they became more a pleasure, was it? Uh, uh, well. There wouldn't have been that much pleasure. There would have been, uh, maybe uh, some famous people travelled down the canal uh, and wrote books about it in, in, in the 1940s and 1930s and whatever. 1840s or 1850s? In the 1850s, uh, there would have been the odd, what they call a pleasure boat or a yacht, when they went down the canal. And there would be some examples of something like the original passenger boats that was there in, in the 19. They, they, they were uh, finished in the 1840s because the trains took over. And they used to work with, with uh, Bianconi. The canal worked in, in, in tandem with Bianconi, and his car carriages carried it from the various stages, say from Tullamore, from, uh, the, from the Barrow, right down to. Uh, that was a, a huge navigation, the Barrow navigation. Uh, I, I grew up beside that, actually. And the passenger boats had considerable. Uh, amenities in terms of dining and drinking and so on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A few details here of what you could buy, pint of, a pint of wine and all that sort of stuff uh, on, on the boat. Um, there were three sections in them. There was first class, second class and, and common class. And there were different uh, different fare rates for, for travelling on boats. Because of course the duration was 10 hours, which is the equivalent of flying to San Francisco, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, much more in the earlier years. Robertstown was a very fashionable hotel. Uh, continued as such right up into the... Uh, right up into the middle of, of, of the 19th century. Um, they had they, they special rooms and maids scurrying and bells ringing as the boat approached and uh, announcing the arrival of the... 6.30 boat from Dublin, or the, uh, the 3.30 boat from uh, Thai or whatever, or from Shannon Harbour, as they arrived. Newbridge was considered, or uh, Robertstown was considered the capital of canal country, uh, and still is. And that's why uh, Father Murphy, sort of, when the canals closed in, in, in 1960, he came as a cure to the parish at that time and start commenced the revival of the canal which he called the Robertstown Canal Festus and Fest every year. I remember being on the first committee for that back in 1964 and uh, we, we had, he, he had anybody who was anybody including uh, presidents, Taoiseachs and everybody came to Robertstown. He had a leg of everybody, he, no matter who it was, they came to Robert. We had a falconry there. Uh, wildlife park and birds, uh, kestrels and various, yeah, and, and they moved out to Ballyteague after that, but they were in Robertstown. And, and, and uh, I remember being on, on the tourist board at the time, and I was promoting, trying to get a canal village of the cottages of Kildare and promote at the time, uh, because we have many unique types of cottages in Kildare, the railway cottages, canal cottages, and some of the canal works Stonework in Canal Cottages, Omer's house, and then Omer's, it, 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 it's a beautiful lock house down near, uh, near uh, Tullamore, and there's another way on, on the way into Dublin. So the, the, the canal was a great piece of architecture, uh, the locks, and uh, the one in Ballytee, 
was built up in a stilt because the canal was lowered afterwards and people often wondered why it was up. You had to go up about six steps to the house. Because the, as I said in 1810, the level, the lower the level had been divided and, and the, the, the level as it stood remained what was called the short level, only about a couple of hundred yards long. And then you had the long level from that which was then a real long. Uh, the one we're on would have been a pretty long level as well, but there was a huge level in, in, in down in County Offaly, uh, they arrived in County some huge levels, depending on the levels I think it's uh, passengers and transit. We carried thousands of tons of, 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 of material. Guinnesses, when they, when they started, was it, it was a boon to Arthur Guinness. He started his, uh, his, his, his brewery in 1859 in Dublin. But that by then, of course, the, 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 the beer would be um, have to be matured for weeks before uh, uh, and, and rested for weeks after it was bought by horse and cart to various places around the country. But then with, with the canal, with the horse boats, the stillness of the water, the water slipping through, the, the Guinness was able to mature in the barrels as it travelled by canal. So it, it was matured and ready for use by the time it reaches its various destinations. So it, it, he was one of the main beneficiaries of the, of the, of the uh, Grand Canal. Of course, Dublin Corporation, the water was so high, uh, it was, 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 was uh, another benefit to the canal. So looking back, you'd say that it's fair to say that the canals were one of the more ways of yes. the late 20th century. Yes, and, 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 and the designs and the build of them would have been simple and similar to what we used. Would, uh, well, I would have said would have been copied by the motorways because you had service bridges along the canal where, the, where big farms was divided into two sections and the nearest that they would have to go a mile or a mile and a half to the nearest bridge. But in some cases the, the farmers were so powerful they would have got a, power, a service bridge. Similar happened with the motorway. Some of were even they were built on the they were never used because the farmers then sold the farm on one side and kept what was left on the other. So the bridge will lay there. One that's open now for the Salins bypass would be one such bridge. And then that's, that's the sort of coming back into your re, 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 redesign the for the Salins bypass. You literally had a roundabout as Roberts. Oh, 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 yeah. A canal roundabout almost. Oh yeah, well you had them quite a lot. Okay. You had you, you had quite a number of them. Uh, you had a number where the boat could turn around. It, 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 I could say a boat would be delivering a load of malt to the Thangan, to the malt house, to Williams's. Well, they, they, they couldn't go two or three miles down the canal to turn. They would have to turn. So they, they had various turning points on the canal. Turn pipe, turn, turn, various turning on the wider part where it went out and around and the, the boat was turning around. Uh, it was, uh, there was a, it, it, it was, a lot of thought went into it, you know, a lot of design and, you know, it, it, it would have been the, the, as I mentioned already, the huge improvement in transport that it, it, it created from, you know, for thousands of years before we had not so many from the invention of wheel, horse and carts, like, you know, but then they decided, in, in, not just here, but all over the world, in water, the, the, the use of water and, 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 and of course, one horse in Ireland could pull 50 tons and it would take 50 horses to do that. Now there, there was, there was um, whole families, there was three people on the boat. The boats were run by, by, by the, you had a skipper, a deckhand and, 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 a, and a, a, a greaser. A greaser was generally a young fella to be learning the trade. He'd be helping with the greasing of the end. The engines when they came in were very, I mean, prior to that, he would have been cooking the meals. It was, there was actually four people on, on the old horse boats because the man would have to walk maybe seven miles, then another man would be ready to Because the boats went continuously, 24 hours a day. I heard an old man describe me, how long did you work on the canal? He said, I worked for 100 years, 50 years by day and 50 years by night. Their whole lives were spent on the canal. Some of them, as soon as they came to got their confirmation, and some of them had returned to get their confirmation at 12 years of age, and went back onto the canal. But if they had a, an uncle or a, a father or an uncle, they immediately started working on the canal. It, it was, it, 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 uh, and there were certain areas along the canal, like uh, 
Kicknevin, Rahan in Austin, um, my own part of the country, Valley T, particularly the people from Valley T would have probably joined up on the Barra line, the Barra navigation. The boat would be passing the house regularly and they'd be able to say hello into their wives or whatever, who they saw very up. And uh, I heard Jim Gill saying on one stage, you know, that what, they got married, but seldom ever saw. The, the children were born, the, 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 there was no such thing as holidays. If, if they were passing by, they would maybe they have one night, and the, 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 all action would have to take place on that one night. So the children were born, and, and well, the, he said there was no other option. I mean, all that they had, it, was, it, it, was, it, it was considered to be a very important job on the canal, because most people at that time were very poor, and they worked for local farmers for pittance pound a week, maybe three pound a week on, on the boat. So it, it was, it, it was a, a huge improvement in the social life of the place as well. And then of course, the intermarriage of, of the boatsmen. There, there's, the boatsmen married in, in, in Banagher, Limerick, uh, Rahan, Tignevin, and, and then of course you had the barrowmen, which went out, the boats went out on, on the river to Great Manor down the barrow, and, uh, where they uh, utilised the, the river barrow and made it navigable. The canals went to its high. And after that, then, of course, there many weirs on, on the canal, down, on the barrow, and the, the side canals in order to, to get the bypass that had locks uh, on the canal. Um, a huge amount of. of, of, of it, it, it's, it was a huge enterprise. The canal was a huge enterprise. Uh, it employed hundreds of people. And of course, unfortunately, many people were drowned on the canal. Many people were drowned on the canal. Um, the, 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 the Calair Observer and the Leinster Leader and indeed the, 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 the Freeman's Journal. You, you would always come across sort of inquests and tragedies where men were lost overboard and not found for, for a couple of days. Um, I remember him when uh, he, he, he one, one, one man went down to make the meal and they were going into Tick Nevin Lock. And, and the boat hit the bank and he rushed up. There was no sign of his father. His father had fell off. The tiller had suddenly turned and hit him and knocked him into And a lot of them couldn't swim. Even though they worked on the canal, a lot of them couldn't swim. It, it was, it was a, uh, they would consider themselves lucky to get a job, and what up with the consequences, whatever they were. Um, I remember the canal boats passing by every, every, I, I had an uncle who worked on the canal. And my mother, uh, he, he'd say, Lizzie, I'll be home. I'll, I'll be on the boat, I'll be home on Thursday. And she used to go out and put her head down to the water, the water being a conductor of sound. She knew the sound of his boat, and she'd hear it coming at Tenerife, which would be about five miles away. And she'd be waiting for him. Now, in, in another, the other side of the social activity was, when they'd come, it was local farmers. And this is the, this, this is the, the, the little bit of uh, thing about it was, there was um, they would get a bag of spuds or, or cabbage. And in return for that, they might get a little sweetie can full of porter. Because the, the boatsmen, I reckon that the Arctic Guinness always may have left enough in the barrel for to supply them. Uh, they had what they called gimlets, where they used to bore a hole in, 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 in the wooden barrel. And they had, little, they had little, little, little dowels to go into it. But then they'd get the bucket, go under the barrel, and then they'd bore the hole at the top. But they went, as soon as they opened up the hole at the top, start to flow and all I'll do is peg in the thing and tap down the hoops. I have two hoops. I have a barrel at home which shows exactly what they done. And this barrel was in the Shannon, in, in the, the Shannon for dying 40 years. It was a terrible tragedy on the Shannon in 1946 when three or four men lost their lives on the way from Gary Kennedy. The boat capsized and it was three or four of them drowned in, 
1946, the biggest tragedy on the Shannon. And, and, and the boat capsized and it lay on the bottom of the Shannon for something about 1980. And then they decided to rise. And some of these barrels came up. There was one man never found. And he was what they call a web. And I asked, remember asking some of the boatmen, what the hell was a web? What did he do? Oh no, a web. The, 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 the cabins where the boatmen lived. Now, in, on the old horse boats, the, 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 the captain, the, 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 the chief man of the boat, had a cabin to himself in the front of the boat. But the, the other two or three men stepped in the stern. In, in the one, in the, 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 the stepped in the stem, they stepped in the stern. But in, in then, what he used to be, he, he used to be saying, uh, vermin would come into the boats. And they used to have to put sulfur cam candles on, on cover over the scuttle with, with uh, the, 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 the green and, and burn these candles to get rid of the infection from, from within from within the from within from within the the, the, uh, the, the boat. Uh, now spiders webs were in the boat, so the, the, they were almost impossible to get rid of in the boat. That these candles would get rid of the webs. So, a guy that would come a lift, would say, come a lift. I, 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 I go with this for the run to Chateau, to Limerick. I never liked them, because that meant another person shared the boat, even though he wasn't working with them. And they'd have to give him some food and everything else. So they called him a wet. But the man who was never found was actually a wet on the boat. He wasn't in by if he got the Grand Canal Company. So hence the very little made about him. <laughs>